I'm talking to David Lee, and he gave a presentation today at E-Day, and he's from the Open Innovation Lab in uh, Shenzhen. What is, what is that exactly? Uh, so we are a uh, platform to connect in the uh, global entrepreneurs to the Shenzhen open ecosystem. Okay, so we're going to talk about it a little bit more and also about his background, but especially I got to talk to him because he had a presentation about uh, a special form of EV, EVS. Electric vehicle? Yeah. yeah, electric vehicle slow. The, the, how is it it's called? called a low, uh, LSEV. It's called LSEV. LSEV. So the low speed electric vehicle. And and how many of those were sold last year in uh, China? Uh, one point seven million. One point seven million electric cars, yeah. small electric cars, were sold. How much do these cars sell for? Uh, from a thousand to three thousand dollars. Thousand to three thousand dollars. Okay, and how fast can these cars uh, go? Uh, they have the typical speed about forty kilometer an hour, and they go up to about seventy. Yeah, so you can only use them in the city, yeah. and yeah, they are mostly for the urban transportations. Yeah, and they're uh, I mean like our handicapped cars in uh, in Holland, and but there there's millions of them are sold. So it's like we sell electric bike, they sell little low speed electric uh, vehicles. Um, how? What is the range of cars like that? Uh, right now, with the lead exit battery, you can go up to about 150 km per charge. Yeah. Uh, switch into lithium ion, uh, it goes up to about 200 to 250. And these things are really small and really cheap and extremely handy for the city. So we don't have anything like that. And, uh, and I think you, are, you, you live in Shanghai, they're not there either, right? They're not in Shanghai. This is the so the the background of how this LSEV got developed. Yeah. Uh, they are targeted at the the rural area in China, where the farmers still with modified motorcycle, uh, three wheel. Uh, they had to endure the cold uh, of the winter, yeah. and so people in the in people making uh, originally making the golf car starting to make uh, enclosed uh, golf car for this group of people yeah. and it become very popular. But they actually look quite nice. This, there's also one which looks like a mini, which is really uh, also looks uh, great, right? I mean, from the inside, outside, how are they to drive? Uh, they're actually very nice. Uh, they have, uh, well, I mean, they, they just look like any of the small car, uh, two seat, four seat. Uh, they just drive like any regular car. And so, and they're very simple, and they're not very complicated with sensors and computers and that kind of stuff. So, and uh, and they and they they're quite reliable. Well, yeah, the car is very reliable. They are very they are they in in the pair uh, in the pair format. They are actually uh, pretty simple. Mm -hmm. But these days, uh, one of the thing is the adding the digital exper experience ah. into the car is cheap. Okay, so I can also order it with a Tesla screen. We do have someone who do the 22-inch uh, screen uh, in-car experience, uh -huh. and that will cost you extra $200. <laughs> Could I drive a car? Would it be possible to import a car like that in Europe and get permission to drive it? Well, uh, the European regulation uh, actually classified this car as uh, either uh, L6E or L7E. Uh, there are two European classified for low-speed vehicle. We have a standard for low-speed vehicle, and the Netherlands should allow it to come here and to be on the road? Yeah, I mean, uh, I haven't looked at the detail in Netherlands, uh, but it been in France, from uh, the information I have, yeah. is the, you can get, you can get license if the, the car doesn't go on a freeway. Uh, you can import that, have, it, have a clear license to drive on the street within about one to two months. Yeah. So we're now, re be, we're now very excited about the electric uh, uh, vehicle industry because it does a million cars a year. But you say there's a diff light, slightly different car thing and they do 1.7 million a year just from China. Yeah, uh, this car is only available in two provinces in China. Uh, <coughs> but they are already up at about 1.7 million. And the, uh, the central government tried to forbid them but they didn't. Oh yeah, so five years ago, the Chinese central government uh, issued a policy saying that's no, uh, they don't want to develop a low-speed EV. Mm -hmm. 
and but the two problems still went ahead and developed the industry. And now they are at 1.7 million without any subsidies. Uh, now the central government loves them. They are is that the installed base or the amount of which is sold every year? Uh, it's the it's uh, 1.7 million is sold last year, 2017. Okay. Uh, and but the install base is probably more close to about five millions. Okay. All right. And so, what will happen to the rest? How many provinces are there in China? Uh, there are 37 provinces in China. Okay. So, what about the other 34? Will they start to accept a low-speed electric vehicle? Uh, I think with the central government to standardize the low-speed vehicle. And right now, there are 95 cities in China is looking at uh, legitimize this car. So the, the, for the next couple of years, uh, this is going into exponential growth in China. Okay. So it can easily become 10 times bigger and, and have 20 million uh, sold a year. Oh, yeah. Right now, the, the, the market projection for this car, this class of car in China by 2020 is 10 million unit a year. 2020 that's only you know in in two years yep so the the the, the low speed ev market has been growing at about 80 percent a year for the past two years how much of those uh, 1.7 million are exported to um, america africa europe well i think right now it's less than one percent is going out of the countries okay. and they are actually i mean if you look at shanghai there's no parking space there's no space for people on the road. Only one, uh, about 5% has, has a second person in the car, but they are not accepted there. And, and, and that is culturally, or is that politically, or is that economically? Uh, well, I think for Shanghai, this is, this is the peasant's car. Uh, they, I mean, they, this, this is not something suitable for Shanghai, but I joke about the, the possibility of this car making it to Shanghai is through Europe. Uh, if it's first it has to be accepted here and I go like this is extremely practical you can park everywhere it's like our smart we have the smart from Daimler yep. and uh, and that car a little bit smaller the it's, it's it has a market share but it's very very small would a car like that be accepted um, uh, here in in Europe what, what is you, what is your experience if you show it to people well I think this is the great entrepreneur opportunity for European uh, is the rethinking about the possibility of bringing 3,000, 5,000 euro car uh, with new digital experience. Um, right now, there are people modify this car to be self-driving. Uh, there are actually two. Uh, there are actually two cities in China with special zoning, uh, and they are experimenting with the this car, this class of car with fully self-autonomous driving. So the the past okay, fantastic inside the city for one person or two people and then you know you don't need mark much parking spaces and when they become autonomous they can be shared so china is all about sharing i mean they have this bike sharing experiments and there's lots of unicorns and lots of companies which have tens of millions of shared bikes eh? so we can also draw from that experience what will happen to shared cars do you think uh, if you look at the experience you had in shared bikes in china will shared cars be a success shared car is already in china right now so in Shenzhen, we can actually go and rent a shared car on the street with the mobile phone yeah. uh, and this is going to kick into gears in the next few years uh, with the availability of the the low speed low cost uh, electric car um, so, yeah, but I think that model is not just limited to China. Uh, no, 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 we already have shared cars. We have about uh, 800 shared cars here in Amsterdam. And you can just go with your bike, uh, with your mobile phone and pick it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, it can be a lot cheaper. I mean, uh, what kind of prices do you pay? Do you pay per the kilometer or per minute or per hour? How does it work there? Uh, I think right now it's paid by... I think it's paid by hour. I haven't tried. Have any idea about the prices you charge? Uh, they charge there. Uh, for Shenzhen, it just got started, so right now it's all at the trial base. So I'm actually driving them for free. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll see here. It, here it's about twelve euro per hour to have a shared car, and I'm sure it's a lot less in Shenzhen, uh, and especially if you have those low speed, uh, low speed cars. Okay. The, uh, the presentation you did today at uh, E-Day, what was that about? 
Uh, it's really rethinking about a lot of the technology as the as commodities. So if you think about if you want to launch in your own mobile phone, you don't have to start in the entire engineering to do it. Uh, you can take China's resource and make your own phone. Mm -hmm. And right now, make your own car. Uh, the this today in e days, that's the introduction of the concept to rethinking about. Uh, China as a resource to launch in a new brand. Yeah, what huge amount of companies are already doing because China is manufacturing everything and is doing more and more of the engineering. So what's new about that? Uh, well, right now it's the the new thing is uh, getting it into the head of the new entrepreneur, people three person company who can who are actually in the position to launch in mobile phone. Three person company can be in the position to launch in yeah. a new EV company. It's overwhelming to come to Shenzhen. I mean, I've been there a bunch of times, and to find out the right people who you can trust, and your platform, your uh, your uh, your company, your platform. I can use that if I'm an entrepreneur. I can go to you and, and get relationships and get trust and get uh, get introduced. Yeah, uh, that's what we do. So we are supported by Shenzhen government to be that bridge between the uh, global entrepreneurs and Shenzhen. So I have somebody who wants to actually make a, uh, an, uh, a certain device mm -hmm. and, and he's now going around to all these individual companies and trying to figure out who can be trusted or not. So he can how, does he, how, how does he work with you? Well, send us an email and let us know what, uh, what he wants to build. Um, we actually work in a very simple model. Uh, we don't ask for technical detail. Uh, we typically ask the entrepreneur to provide us a one pager, the, the, the page of a brochure of the product they want to put on the market uh, as they are going out to the sales call. Um, and we can base on that one pagers to find the best match in, in Shenzhen. Okay. And then you connect me to them and do you do anything else than that? Uh, we connect you to the trusted partner and if there's any modification needed, if there's any and we can bring in additional resource, the engineering, the design, uh, and then, yeah. And then you want to be a trusted source between those groups? We want to be the trusted bridge into those groups. Okay. So you have some experience with American entrepreneurs, European entrepreneurs, and African entrepreneurs. How would you characterize the diff difference? Yeah, so for, from, for uh, what? For where we are from, Shenzhen, is the, it's all about cash flow and shipping, uh, and producing and shipping. Um, so we purposely looking for entrepreneurs who can leverage this kind of capacity. Yeah. Uh, when we started, uh, we have interfaced with a lot with the entrepreneur in America, yeah. but I think huge amount of them is bas basically driven by valuations. Uh, shipping a product and not earning money and not making a profit, but just a lot of uh, you know VC uh, VC driven business. It's very VC driven business. So we move our focus to Europe in yeah. 2016. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of the good intention want to ship stuff, yeah. but again, it's the, it's a little bit too slow to our to to catching up with our speed. So the Americans are driven on valuation, don't do anything because they are making smoking mirrors. The Europeans are too slow to ship anything. So where are you now focusing on? Uh, so for the past year and a half, we have been focusing with uh, African entrepreneur. They are they send it, they send me, they send us email, and they are more eager to ship than most of our Shenzhen partners. If you want a trusted bridge into Shenzhen, this is a very good place. I'll make sure that the uh, the website. What is the website? Uh, it's S-Z-O-I-L dot O-R-G. And also this EV. Why should it look the same? Why not have something which is much more efficient, much easier to park, very useful for the city? We can rethink it and, and uh, China can be a nice uh, inspirational in, uh, example. I mean, for the rest of China, these two uh, provinces, they are a good example and, uh, and they, it's interesting and also for Europe. And if we can leg legitimize that concept, that will be uh, a lot of fun. So next year, what is your goal next year? That there will be people, that there will be uh, uh, low speed EVs driving around here in Amsterdam? Uh, hopefully, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see uh, finding a partner entrepreneur here who are interested in take a crack into the EV market. Um, 
there's the there's a lot of er, there's a lot of uh, space for imaginations, yeah. and also the other thing to look at is look at the the beautiful classic uh, small car coming out from came out in Europe in back in the sixties and fifties. Oh, yeah. There are so many beautiful space age design for small vehicle on the street. It's, it's really weird why we didn't get them. Why it hasn't become big. Well, it's it's the time to go back to go back to thinking about that route. Yeah. Where are you from originally? Uh, I'm originally from Taiwan. And then what did you do? Uh, so I study in the U.S. and I be I, what? Uh, I study computer science in the U.S. and I started my first internet company in '95. In the U.S. Okay, and now he ended up in China as doing innovation between international entrepreneurs and the Chinese. Uh, production capacity available there. Thanks very much. Thank you. Did you like this video? There's more where this came from. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified about our new videos.